Hello, I'm Jesse with American Radon Mitigation. Do you have a radon system that freezes up in the winter? We have come up with a solution that will help keep your system thawed, and that's a de-icing system. So before you order your de-icing kit from our website, you will need to measure how much de-icing cable you need. To measure that, we are going to hold our tape measure a foot above the top of the pipe. That will allow us to have a little bit of extra room for that cable to loop back down inside the pipe. And then where we come out of the pipe here, we're going to add an additional four feet or so, and that will give the electrician room to work with his power connection. Once your power connection kit and your de-icing cable arrive, it's time to drill the hole where we'll have the cable pass through the pipe and we'll install this strain relief. So I'm going to mark where I want the cable to come out and that's about right here. The next step is going to be to shut off your radon fan. Make sure there's no power to it. And then if yours is hardwired, you're going to have to take off the electrical box cover. Make sure you take a photo of that so you know what wire goes to what. And then we'll need a 5 16 nut driver or a flat blade screwdriver to loosen the rubber couplers that hold your fan in place. And then we'll want to cover this hole so that the shavings from the PVC don't land down in the radon pipe. All right, so now that we've got our fan removed, we can drill the hole. So I've got a three quarter inch drill bit and I'm gonna enlarge it a little bit so that my threads catch. You could also tap this hole and create your own threads, but uh, just for simplicity, we're gonna do it this way. So I've got my mark there. All right, now that I've got my hole drilled, I'm just gonna use my reaming pen. I could also use my drill bit just to make that hole larger. We'll just enlarge that a bit until we can thread in the strain relief. All right, that feels good there. I'm just gonna use um, some caulking. Here I've got some quad. So I'll just put a little bit of that on the threads. There is an O-ring on this. However, it's not a flat surface on this pipe, so we'll use this quad to help make a little bit better of a seal there. And then we'll tighten that up with the channel locks. All right, that feels snug. And then I'll take the locking nut and I'll thread this on on the inside. And that'll help lock everything into place. All right, now that we've got that snugged up, I can go ahead and remove the rubber grommet. And there's a little washer in there too. As I take that out, be sure to keep the orientation so this, this narrow part goes into the fitting and then there's also this washer in here. So it will go like this, like this, and then like this. So we can set that aside for now as it's easier to get our cable from the top and then down and through and then we can add that stuff at the end. Now at the top of the pipe, you may or may not have a critter guard cap. So that critter guard is just a half inch screen mesh that goes over the top. And in this case, we installed it because we have an oak tree right above us so we don't get acorns and leaves and stuff falling down there. So in this instance, we're gonna have to cut a little bit out to allow for this heat cable to go down. But first, let's get the heat cable down the pipe. So we've got two ends. One is gonna be the end for the electrician. That does not have the end seal on it. You may have to take some of the curve out of the cable. Okay, that came out the bottom. So then at the top here, I'm just gonna overlap it a little bit so that some of this cable comes down Oh, about six inches or so. So we got, got kind of some double coverage at the top here. So I'm gonna make room for my cable to pass through this screen just by cutting out a portion of the screen. Now that I've got a chunk of that screen cut out to allow the cable to pass through, I'm gonna drill a couple 3 16 holes on both sides of the pipe so I can run a zip tie there 
to hold the cable from falling down. Be careful not to hit the cable. So now I can install my first zip tie and then get my second one started. So I did the one on the end seal first and tighten that up. This one I'm gonna leave a little bit loose. Put my screen in place, push it down, and then I'll put the piece on the top here and I'll cut off the extra part of the zip tie. Then I'll use the two Phillips screws that are provided with the critter guard. We're going to put a link to these in the description if you'd like to add a critter guard to your system. We've just got two stainless steel screws. Be sure not to hit the cable. Now we can head down and finish up the rest of the install. All right, now we can pass the de-icing cable through the strain relief. And you want to be careful because the edges of that strain relief are a little bit sharp. And then instead of pulling this tight, where the cable kind of comes out at this angle, I want to leave a little bit of slack in the pipe here so that any condensation on this isn't diverted towards the hole we have in the pipe so it'll drip off the bottom. So I'm gonna have kind of a little U shape down inside the pipe. And then we can reinstall the rubber grommet. So we'll slide this in until it seats. And then the washer and the nut, we'll go over that. And that'll help kind of squeeze that rubber grommet in place, making an airtight connection. This is ready for the electrician to wire. So give them that power connection kit, and then we can put the fan back in and power it back up. And that's how you install your de-icing cable. Now, a few indications about when you want to turn that system on is you might get to know your system. Maybe you notice, hey, it's zero degrees for three days in a row, and that's when my system starts to ice up. You could turn it on during those instances and turn it back off once it warms up to conserve energy. Some people will probably leave it on all winter or all the time, uh, but that's kind of a waste of power. Another way might be to let your system freeze, let your radon system alarm go off, and then turn on your system. However, I wouldn't recommend that method because once you start to melt the ice, that ice could come down and damage your fan. So I'd rather have it on as a preventative measure before the system starts to ice. So I hope you found the video helpful. We'll put links to all the products you saw here in the description, and you can buy these de-icing kits on our website. And until next time, I'm Jesse with American Radon Mitigation. Thank you so much for watching.